All right, welcome everybody to the newest episode. It's not even a title for this stuff. It's just called the Free Mathematics Workshop. Like, this is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> that's, that's the title. But today we got a special guest, a special guest. Our topic today, before I introduce the special guest, preparing students for the SAT, ACT, five important strategies for teachers. Now, Everybody knows I don't claim to be an expert in everything. I know some people want to be a jack of all trades. I stay in my lane, but I know experts who know stuff I don't know. And today we have on an expert, Jen the Tutor. Jen the Tutor, introduce Yay. yourself to the people. Hi, it's me, Jen the Tutor. So I've been tutoring for about 10 years and been doing SAT and ACT work for about whew, six or seven, but also worked in some schools during your remediation strategy. So I'm excited to be here teaching you guys how to, you know, prepare your students, especially now that you, a lot of you are home. Boom. So we got Jen, the tutor. These strategies are great for teachers. They're also great for parents. They're great for anybody who wants to prepare a kid for the SAT, ACT. Right. As, you, as you all know, I do a disclaimer every show. Just why? Because lawyers like to make a lot of money off of stuff. So guess what? You should be a lawyer. Take them a CYA and uh, my statements and opinions are my own. I don't represent any entities with the show. So always, always, always start off with the goal. We're focused on participants will learn five essential strategies to prepare students for the SAT, ACT. All right. As Jen, the tutor has pointed out, I'm, I'm going to put it on the table. She is the hands down best tutor that I know and oh. will. hands down hands down so if you need someone to help your child or your students she is the one and we'll give you a contact information at the end but mm -hmm. I don't you know I, you all know I don't endorse people I don't hype people up unless they're the real deal holy field I don't know why people say real deal holy field but it sounds cool so check it's it out well cool. you still win that's what it is no I hope yeah. lost a couple holy field lost a couple <laughs> <laughs> all right so here we go five essential strategies as you all know the show is a 15 minutes if you have questions submit them to my website christopherchilds.com backslash free resources is a live call-in show so you'll get to call in ask your question live as you all know i get questions all the time so i save them so if you want to be on air this is the perfect time to email me so as you as you all know i say as you all know because some people don't know I got the iPad going over here. I got the iPad here. I got phones right here. Yeah. I'm, I'm tech overload right now. My, my electric bill is going to be crazy because all this technology. But let's get into the five strategies. Strategy mm -hmm. number one, how this works. Jen the tutor is the expert. I'm the hype man at this moment. I'm going <laughs> to hype it up. I'm like, you know, when you think about famous groups like Busta Rhymes and Spiff Star. Right now, I'm Spiff, what is it, Spiff, 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 Spiff? The guy that was with Busta Rhymes, I'm him. <laughs> Then the two of the bus around. So I'm going to hype it up, and then she's going to bring it on. So the very first essential thing, knowing about free resources. What do we say? Free, F-R-E-E, -E, free mm -hmm. resources. Jen, what does that mean? So not all SAT prep needs to be paid for, and especially when we're waiting on tests because we don't know when the next test is going to be. It's going to be in June, allegedly. It could change. So for me, my favorite free resources for SAT are 1600 I.O., there's a free four test class and then Khan Academy, which I kind of like, and you know, there's still some issues with it. Um, for ACT, I, there's not a lot of free resources, but I like to go on YouTube and I make sure that it's somebody who I've watched a lot of their videos. And um, I like Scalar and a couple other people on there who are really good at making sure that we have very, great strategies. I don't like to watch a lot of students who are doing YouTube videos because those strategies don't necessarily all, always apply. So you see a lot of students say, this is how I got a perfect score. Kind of avoid those because that might work for one student, but it might not work for a next student. So make sure that you're always vetting your free supplies. The word of the day is free, F-R-E-E. -E. All mm -hmm. right, strategy number two, knowing that this is, this is critical because in the math world, we say you got to yeah. know your content, you got to know your content, you got to know your standards. Here, you actually got to know what's, because a lot of people really, really don't know what's on the test. Yeah. So, take it away. So on the SAT, for example, I went through tests one through 10, and I kind of identified some things that were highly tested, and it's changed a lot, because I actually just updated it last night, 
um, more quadratics, more, you know, ratios, more, less percent, which is a little bit surprising. Uh, something that can actually be highly tested for both tests if you're prepping for both is ratios, rates, um, proportions, angles. Um, on the SAT, you're going to see a little bit less geometry. On the ACT, you're going to see a little bit more geometry. So knowing the tested content will allow you to kind of avoid some of the things that are not tested a lot. Like volume is tested a little bit more on the ACT, but not really tested as much on the SAT. And I have like on my website, I'll have a breakdown of each highly tested area for the SAT. All right, cool. We're going to definitely shout out that website throughout. Mm -hmm. Man, let's shout it out throughout. So what's the website? And we're going to give them a link at the end, but what's the website? Yeah, really it's, I created a special website for this. So it's gemmatutor.com with two N's um, backslash educators. Just for my, just, you know, I, you know for my listeners, my, mm -hmm. my viewers, mm -hmm. Jen, when you say two N's, she means J. E N N. E -N, -N. Right. I don't want y'all to put the N at the end somewhere. So Jen, the tutor. All right. Yeah. Backslash educators. Uh, educators. All right. We're gonna shout it out throughout. All right. So yeah. the very first one, the very first one, locating the free free resources. Number two, knowing the tested content. Number three, easy. Like I think some people try to make the SAT ACT super hard. Like they they mm -hmm. want to. I want to do the challenging stuff first. Yeah, about easy wins. We got to build. We got to scale this thing up. So, so what are your thoughts? For me, I like to start with something easy, and I always like something that kind of is perceived as a little bit more difficult, but is a little bit easier. So, basic functions when you're plugging something in is something that students feel a little bit confident with after they do that. But usually, tests in the test one through about ten to fifteen has a lot of easy ones for the ACT, and then one through about four or five on the SAT for the no calculator section. Those are some good easy wins. You always wanna make sure that you're hitting an easy win every single day. And if you see students getting frustrated, you wanna have those in your back pocket at all times. Easy, easy peasy, lemon squeeze. I don't know what lemon squeeze it was, but it's easy. <laughs> all right, number four, incorporating strategic style review. I wanna jump in on this one. I, you know, yes. when you're doing a show, sometimes the hype man gets a little, little, little spot or the hype girl gets a little spot. I get a little Yeah, spot. for sure. So with this strategic review, this is focusing on, a lot of times we review for the sake of reviewing, but we need to really be strategic and conscious. What is prior material students have learned? What mm -hmm. are they learning now? And then what are we preparing them for? So we're constantly seeing how things interconnect and not disjoint it. Like I teach one thing here, I teach this, I teach this, but then I review, I review it in sections. We want to see how all of these things work together so mm -hmm. students can see that all of these things make sense. Don't you agree or do you disagree? No, I agree. I think especially for the SAT, like doing linear equations, that is something that if you teach a student how to do various problems of linear equation and then go back and say, this is a, a question where it was, and it's kind of hidden, and here's another question where it was, and it was kind of hidden, and kind of show them that, then it helps. Also circling back a lot to percents and ratios and how they kind of change throughout the test especially considering that like the earlier questions for almost every single test tend to be a little bit easier and then as you get l later you kind of build on those concepts so you always want to circle back there especially with the highly tested areas which we talked about earlier you want to circle back and also make sure that you know that you know those certain things that you're going to have to review over and over again and not get frustrated what did she say? Review over and over. And it's not drill yeah. and kill. It's more so strategically thinking about how do we help yeah. to build this sense making with it. Yeah. And just to go hit on that point one more time, like, for example, you can review exponential growth while reviewing percents and say, you know, if this was a percent, it would look like this. So kind of doing that kind of stuff allows them to get more bang for their buck. All right. Number five, we said we had five essential strategies. Yes. This is number five. Reframe, oh my gosh, reframing from overwhelm. Man, I know when it's <laughs> time, people, parents freak out, teachers freak out. Everybody like just goes crazy when it gets to test time. Like what, right. Jen, Jen the tutor, help, help the people out, help the people out. Right, for me, it's, it's a little bit harder now that we're online because I usually like to look in my students' eyes and I can get, get a sense. But one of the things that I do is as I'm teaching, I always say, does everybody get that? Does everybody understand? So as you're taking every single step, kind of 
feel the room, even though it's virtual and say, does everybody get that? If you don't hear from somebody repeatedly during the, that process, kind of before they even ask you to go back, go back and say, I'm going to go back just one more time to make sure we're all on the same page and then connect with that student later to make sure that they have what they need. But also kind of making sure that people are aware you're not going to see tons of growth immediately. Um, that's why for me, problem solving and data analysis is something that's really easy to go back to. It's our ratios, it's our percents, it's our, and I keep saying that because it's one of the most highly tested areas, but going back to those basic fundamentals for kids at a 1600 who have coached to a 1600 and kids at a 900, that kind of stuff is something that they may have not seen since third, fourth, and fifth grade, but something that they can easily grasp. So going to an easy concept area after a hard one will really allow students to feel back in their comfort zone. All right, so we got five. Let's, let's review the five. You know, we're teachers, okay. so I'm gonna review the five. Number, all right, I missed my notes up. Let me see what I got. Number one, locating free resources. Number two, knowing the tested content. Number three, easy wins. Number four, incorporating strategic spiral review. And number five, reframing from, from overwhelming students. As you all know, I love to give out bonus bonuses. Mm -hmm. Like I cannot just do five tips, seven tips. I gotta have a bonus. Mm -hmm. So the bonus question, the bonus strategy, the bonus, this is what bonus whatever I want it to be. Mm -hmm. Jim the tutor, my favorite SAT, ACT tutor, not in the United States, in the world, in the universe. Mm -hmm. What test should someone take? That, I, mean, I, I don't hate, know if this is a strategy, but this is just putting yeah. you on the spot. I need to take a test. I got to graduate. Which yeah. test do I take? Um, and I hate to be a lawyer here and go back to my roots, but it really does depend. Um, I, I tend to tell students to take both and see which one you score better on, but we don't have that much runway anymore. So you can take a practice test of each test. The one thing I will say is if you have a lot of anxiety and a student that has a lot of pacing issues, what I mean is like they feel really constrained by time constraints. The ACT is a very fast paced test. You don't necessarily want them taking the ACT. The SAT, however, is a very hard test in terms of reading comprehension and that stays true for the math. The math is really reading comprehension in terms of the way that they structure the test. So for students that have harder are not getting the comprehension or maybe students who are English as second language learners or students who just struggle with trying to figure out what the test is actually saying. The SAT is really hard for that and that the ACT is just much more straightforward. So kind of have them take a practice test of both. Don't just say because my state's doing the ACT, we should be doing the ACT. Because my state's doing the SAT, we should be doing the SAT. Allow students to kind of take some agency in that and decide which test is best for them. All right, so you heard it from the pro. This is your chance if you want to ask a question live. Again, you can submit questions. Don't do it on Twitter right now. Do it on the website. This is <laughs> documentation. So if you submit questions, you ask them live. Obviously, I record everything. I'm posting on different channels. So people are going to watch this forever, which is mm -hmm. great. But there's nothing better than asking a live question. That's just me. But if you want to ask it live, why not ask it live? All right, so now I plug everything on. Oh, I'm plugging her. <laughs> so this is Jen, the tutor's website. Hey, give them like that 30 second elevator speech. I, you, don't, you don't have to say you're the best. I'm saying you're the best because some people don't want to say they're the best, but you're the best. So um, give them that 30 I'll say second. I'm, the best. I'm one of the best for sure. Give them that 30, <laughs> 30 second elevator speech. This is her website page, Jen, the tutor.com mm -hmm. backslash educators. So for me right now, I'm pivoting because a lot of our students are trying to figure out what time to take the SAT and ACT. I'm focused on giving SAT and ACT resources. So I developed this page literally last night. Um, and if you kind of scroll, well, you can't scroll down here, but there's going to be um, down there, you're gonna see just the highly tested areas and it's connected to Khan Academy. So you look at that list and it's gonna actually take you to free lessons that you could use with your students. And it's also based on the score goal that you have. As I keep on uh, updating my resources, I'm gonna put that there. So if you go to jenthetutor.com backslash educators, you'll always have free resources. I am always on Twitter. So you can always tag me on Twitter at jenthetutor. Um, so that's usually where I am. And if you ever need anything, just reach out. Boom, reach out to her. She's dope. She's dope, y'all. All right. Yeah. 
you all know I have the Inspiring Educators podcast. Check it out on all social media platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play. It is the dopest education podcast in the world. I'm just throwing it out there. It is the dopest. If, all right, this is Women's History Month. As long as we're in the month of March, I'm going to highlight a woman mathematics educator that I think is dope, that's doing dope work. Jen the Tutor is doing amazing work. That's why we have her on the show, not just highlighting it. But this spotlight is Mona Tonshev. She's an author. She has a dope book. It's like, I'm wrong for saying she has a dope book and not remember the exact title, but her and Bill Barnes did a dope book. It's like five keys. I want to say it's five keys. Matter of fact, this is live, so I got to be right. Uh, Mona, hold on, hold on. On the show, Jennifer, Jen, I refuse to be like, uh, not have my books game type. So yeah, that's why I have an iPad, even though it's live. I can't. All right, here we go. Activating the vision, the four keys of mathematics leadership. Check it out. Activating the vision, the four keys of mathematics leadership. I'm glad I looked it up. I was about to say the five keys, but I knew it was the <laughs> keys. But check out, she's the president of NCSM, the National Council of Supervisors of Mathematics. Real dope individual. Check out. So, question of the day to our audience Which test do you recommend your students take and why? It's up to you. No. That's it. You pick whatever test you recommend, but tell us why. Because some people, I want to do the ACT or I do the SAT. Do not tie it to because our state does it. As she pointed out earlier in the episode, it's not about just our state does it this way. It's bigger than that. So right. let's connect. This is your boy, Dr. Christmas Day Childs. You know me, developing problem solvers and not just rule followers. We're going to transition now. You're going to stay on for the Ask DRK Child Show, right? You got of a couple course. questions. Boom. So you can stay on or if you see what's cool about this. If you're on live now, it's going to transition to another slide. If you're watching it on the web, you're going to have to go find another episode. I'm just saying. It's two yeah. separate episodes on the web. 